Solemnity of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel Thus says the Lord God I myself will look after and tend my sheep As a shepherd tends his flock When he finds himself among his scattered sheep So will I tend my sheep I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered When it was cloudy and dark I will lead them out from among the peoples and gather them from the foreign lands. I will bring them back to their own country and pasture them upon the mountains of Israel, in the land's ravines and all its inhabited places. In good pastures will I pasture them, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing ground. There they shall lie down on good grazing ground, and in rich pastures shall they be pastured, on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, How much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to the Pharisees and scribes. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and, upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. The Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The first reading comes from Ezekiel 34, 11 to 16. In this passage, we hear about how God would shepherd his people as a shepherd tends his flock. He will look for the lost, for the broken, He will seek them out and bring them back to the flock, and he will strengthen them. This passage was written during the Babylonian exile, 
And the image of shepherd was very important at that time. This is the time that Psalm 23 was written, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It provided an example of how intimate God's love was for his people Israel. Now the priests, the kings, were supposed to be the shepherds of Israel. They were to guide the people of Israel in the right way. But they had failed in that responsibility. And so God himself will take that responsibility upon himself. This is a passage that was read during the Feast of Dedication. And when Jesus visited Jerusalem, according to the Gospel of John during that feast, he proclaimed that he is the Good Shepherd, that he is the personification of what had been promised, that God himself would come and take care of the sheep. The second reading is from Romans 5, 5b to 11. It speaks about how much God loves us and would care for us. While we were still sinners, while we were rebels, Jesus died for our sins. He removed the guilt that we truly deserved. And if that was true while we were still sinners, how much more will he show us his love now that we've been justified, now that through his blood we've been washed free of our sins? And so now that we have the Holy Spirit within our hearts telling us that God is Abba, that God truly loves us, loves us to death, we can believe that promise. We can be people of faith. The Gospel is from Luke 15, 3 to 7. And once again, we see a story which involves shepherds. In this case, the story of a hundred sheep, one gets lost, and the shepherd leads the 99 to seek out that sheep that was lost. For the 99, it might seem unfair. They had followed the shepherd all the time. Why is he abandoning them to seek out that one lost sheep whose being lost is probably its own fault? The answer is that that lost sheep needs him. The 99 had the presence of the shepherd all the time. The lost sheep, even if the reason that it's lost is its own foolishness, needs the presence of that shepherd. Otherwise, it will die. And so likewise, in life, our goal is to reach out to the lost sheep. That's part of our ministry in church. Not so much to serve those who show up in church, but to reach out to those who are sinners, those who are alienated, those who are broken. When I would do parish missions, I've often asked the question, what part of our parish budget is spent on evangelizing those who have fallen away from the church? And usually it's close to nothing. We have to listen to the message of Luke, which is that the lost sheep are the ones who most need the love of God manifested in their lives. And may God bless us.